Hey guys, I'll be here again. This time around doing what I do best, installing mods on my BMW F800GS. In this episode we're gonna install the Scott steering damper. Long time due, but it's finally time to do it. But before we get into it, I just wanna thank everybody. We just reached, the, uh, we actually just passed the 300 subscriber mark. So thank you very much for the support. Now let's stay focused. Next mark 400 subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, subscribe. But uh, let's just get right into it and let's put this on the bike. Okay, let's take a look uh, to see what comes in the box with the Scott steering damper. So, good packing, foam, foam, okay, and rejoy, we do have instructions, and then a user manual, stickers, and then we have the damper itself, the bracket, and then we have a five point bit for the ignition key uh, bolts. Two nuts uh, self-locking, couple of bolts, two bigger bolts, spacers, and the mounting bracket, which I might add, it looks pretty good. The first step in this installation is to remove the seat and the center cowl. Now the center cowl is all down by six bolt, four on top and two on the side. And remember, don't forget to unplug the wire connected to the cowling. This installation is not too difficult. Uh, I'll give it a two wrenches on a scale of three. Now, Scott says that if you can change a spark plug, you should be able to install a Scott steering damper. And I might have to agree with, uh, with this sentence. In reality, everything is laid out properly. Every piece fits in a proper way. And there is no fiddling around. It's just very straightforward. The instructions are great. And uh, from now on, you actually have this video to have as a reference for the installation. What we need to do is remove anything that's on the handlebar. And in my case, it's uh, the the cross brace uh, pad and move out of the way my ramp mount as well. Step number two is to loosen the upper bar clamp bolts using a Torx key. Now since we're talking about handlebar it's important to remember that the BMW F800GS kit raises the handlebar by 20 millimeter which is a good thing if you do a lot of standing up riding. Now wrap those bars in a towel or an old shirt and move them out of the way just by simply pushing them forward and laying it against the instrument cluster. Step number three is to remove the stock lower bum mount and discard all uh, the hardware but for the rubber bushing and those capped uh, washers. Now, it's important to remember, before you do this, uh, you might want to get your torque wrench and check uh, the, the tension on the bolts and uh, note it down somewhere. Now, the tension might be anywhere between uh, 10 foot-pound to 16 foot-pound, depending, but uh, it's important not to over-torque uh, those, uh, those bolts so that uh, the rubber bushing don't get damaged and they keep giving you some vibration protection uh, at the same time. So pull uh, the, the stock uh, lower bar mount out and take care of uh, keeping the, the rubber bushings. Now there might be a little bit of fiddling to get it out but it's not that hard. Next thing is to put together the sub bar mount. Now, first and foremost, the sub bar mount is made of anodized aluminum to resist the elements, while the bracket is made out of uh, stainless steel. Get the provided bolts and pass them through the sub mount. Then get the spacers and uh, get them through the bolt. 
Now it's time to get the rubber bushing. Now the only part of the rubber bushing you'll need up to this point is uh, the top part and the metal sleeve. But to give you an idea of what the complete assembly looks like, I'm going to put in also the rubber lower bushing, the cap washer and the provided self-locking nuts. I just forgot to add the provided washer as well. I'll make sure to be clear and to point them out uh, when they need to be installed. But uh, we'll take care of that later on in the video while I'm actually putting it onto the bike. Those two washers right there in the circle. So now the assembly is complete, let's put it on the bike. Time to start assembly. Step number four. So remove the lower rubber bushing and get the whole assembly through the hole in the triple clamp. At this point, when the assembly is solid in place, get the lower rubber bushing and get them through again, pushing on the long bolts so that it doesn't rise. Remember the washer I forgot? There it was. Get the provided nylock nuts, put them on, and tie them evenly until the bolts show at least two, three threads on the other side. Since I didn't take anything off the underside of the bike, I'm using a long extension to get to those nuts and tie them. Now, do not over tie them. The rubber mounts need to flex slightly. Since there is not a positive stop on those nuts, it's actually possible to over tie them. So it's time to get that torque value and actually use it. Remember that Torx bit provided by the kit with a hole in it? Well, it's time to use it. This is step five where we remove the bolts that all tie the key switch. Now, the right side needs that special bit, but the left side, it's just the regular Torx. And it's kind of hard to, to undo. So remove those uh, bolts and uh, Let's move on to step six, which is uh, install the frame bracket. This step is pretty straightforward. Just uh, put the frame bracket on, put the OEM bolts back in place, and uh, hand tie them for the moment. You're gonna need to uh, possibly remove it again to adjust the tower pin. So grab your provided bit and uh, tie them up a bit. Step number seven, it's actually time to put the stabilizer on using those two Allen bolts to fix it to the sub mount. At this point it's worth mentioning that the Scott's damper is actually transferable between uh, bikes. In seconds, you just need the proper mounting kit on each bike and you can just move the damper from bike to bike, saving you quite a bit of money. The link arm is going to move up and down during the use, so it's critical that this link arm is in the middle of the flats of the tower pin. To do so, you just need to loosen up the no lock nuts, adjust the tower pin height by rotating it to the proper position, and then tie the lock nuts back. This might take uh, a few attempts, but once you're satisfied with the alignment, it's time to put everything back together and don't forget to put some Loctite on the gem nut. It's very important to periodically check the tension on the gem nut. It is possible that the gem nut can come loose, especially during initial use, so be sure to maintain it properly. Time to start putting everything back together. On step number eight, we are gonna tie the key switch bolts on the 2015 model is 14 foot pound of torque. Let's move on to step number nine. Put the handlebar back on the sub mount. Once you put the handlebar on, grab the upper clamp and put them on. Tighten the bolts evenly so that the gap is equal between the mounts. Once you make sure that the gap is even, you can align the bars by looking at those markings that uh, the stock handlebar have on them, those plus signs. 
Once you're satisfied with the alignment and the position is comfortable for you to ride sitting down or standing up, however you, you like, it's time to torque it down to proper spec. On the 2015 model, it's about 20 foot pounds of torque. Scott says that occasionally the plastic pointer on the stabilizer might not clear the bar. It's very close and needs some very slight trimming. Well, in my case, it was more than just the trimming, so I decided to remove it altogether. It's time to trim the key cowling to make it fit, so to avoid scratching the center cowling in the process, let's take it apart. We have three tabs that we need to push in so that the cover will come off. Then we have three bolts underneath that we need to remove to have the key cowling come off. Let's get on with the trimming and enlarge those bolt covers. So the result is this. I had to enlarge the bolt covers and also remove some material from the front lip. And now that uh, the key cover is uh, complete, let's put it back together by reversing the steps. Just like before, we'll put on those uh, three bolts first, taking care of not tie them too much. Remember, it's a piece of fairing, so it doesn't require that much uh, torque on it. Once you have tightened those bolts, remember those three tabs, let's put it back on the hole and push down, and they will snap into place And that's it. Now rotate the bars from uh, full lock left to right and verify that the cable and wires are free to move. At this point, put everything back together and don't forget to plug back in the wire for the power outlet under the cowling as I did. <laughs> Done, you just install yourself a Scott steering damper. Now, go out and enjoy. So the installation is complete. Now, before you hop on the bike and go for a spin, there are a few things Scott wants you to do uh, beforehand. So check again, lock to lock on the handlebar, make sure that there is no interference. Second of all, Scott wants you to start from soft setting and work your way up to your preferred setting. So start soft and go hard. Other than that, you need to check the lock nut on the tower pin. The lock nut is accessible on the side and you don't need to take apart anything to make sure it's, uh, it's uh, still locked safely and secure. Now, the steering damper looks fantastic and is gonna be a giant help. This one specifically has been valved for off-road use. That means it's gonna offer resistance going away from center, but it's gonna offer zero resistance coming back to center. There's going to be a big help if you hit a boulder or something that will twist. With minimal effort you can bring the front wheel back straight. Uh, not only that, but if your power is sliding you can actually counteract the slide without having to force your way through the steering damper. On road this will work uh, just as well and will take care of the infamous wobble where the handlebar are going to be wobbling. You can check uh, this footage kind of scary. If you guys like the video, obviously like. If you guys love the video, obviously subscribe. And uh, if you guys have the same steering damper on your motorcycle and there is something the other riders need to know, leave a comment below. So go check out my website, www.albesadv.com. Other than that, dirt on, and I'll see you next time.